Good evening. Merry Christmas. You can say Merry Christmas back. Hello. Welcome uh, to community. No, wrong place. Family Presbyterian Church. Okay. See, I'm thinking about my old church. Sorry. In Edison. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. We're grateful to have your children with us to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus. Uh, let me have a quick, I'll have a quick prayer and then Kim Whitefield will lead us in whatever. Let's, let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are so blessed to know him in our life, our lives, and that our young people do as well, and that we pass the, the faith, the truth, and the joy of this time from generation to generation. It is in your name that we pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. On this night, we hear God's word. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. To us is born this night in the city of David, a savior, the Messiah, our Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Let us go now to Bethlehem. The light of the world has been born. Let us join shepherds and angels in worshiping the Christ child. Let us pray. Living God, on this holy night, we gather together with shepherds and stand amazed at your glory. We sing with angels, rejoicing in your wonderful work. We wait with Joseph, trusting in your promise. We sit with Mary, cradling your love. We praise you, our Father in heaven, for sending us your Son. May this glorious night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy, for unto us is born a Savior. Glory and praise to you forever. Amen.
Good evening. So, just a few quick announcements. Um, note that the office will be closed next week because me and David are both not going to be here, but if you have an emergency, um, Pastor Ken will be um, around. Um, we have a bunch of stuff going on for families and youth and children in the new year. Um, you'll see on the back of your bulletin a bunch of stuff is listed. Um, January 16th for MLK Day, we'll be here doing a day of service. Um, send your kids, send yourselves, we'll be doing various projects around church. Um, January 23rd, We'll be having a family feud game night. It was a lot of fun last year. We had dinner together. Um, we had families, people who teamed up as a family, um, playing against each other. It was a lot of fun. And that's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the dining room. Um, we have youth groups that will start back up again on the 30th of January. And we have various Bible studies that go on through the year. Um, you'll see when our next women's and under 55's Bible study is in January. Has anyone got any other announcements in the congregation? All right, awesome. Um, I am going to say a quick prayer, and then we um, can watch our kiddos um, share with us the story of when Jesus was born. So let's pray. Dear God, um, thank you for this evening that we have together on Christmas Eve as we remember the day that you sent your son um, to save us from ourselves and show us what unconditional love looks like. Um, I pray as we worship you this evening that we take this moment to turn our eyes to you um, and to remember the great story of love that you um, have given us to remember at this time of year. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Without great further ado, um, I introduce you to this year's 2022 Christmas pageant. Enjoy. This is the story of the first Christmas, the night Jesus Christ was born. We celebrate this to remember the hope and joy that this tiny baby brought to the world on that extraordinary night in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. For Jesus' birth did bring hope and joy to the world. Hope because at the time there was much wrongdoing and fighting on the earth and people were looking for a sign from God that he would always be there to look after them. And joy because after many years of waiting, God had finally fulfilled his promise to teach a man, a savior, a messiah, to send a man, a savior, a messiah to earth to go among the people and teach everybody his peaceful and loving ways. That man would be God's greatest gift to mankind, his son, Jesus Christ. To prepare the world for this man, God asked different men and women to prophesy or foretell that Jesus was coming. These people were called the prophets. This is what they said. And it means God is with us. For unto a child will be given, for unto a baby will be given. And shall be called Wonderful, the Prince of Peace, and there shall be no end to his kingdom. The prophets foretell of a wonderful savior. Yes, a baby who will grow up to lead us in God's ways. And he will be with us forever. Hallelujah. Now, when God was ready to give Jesus to the world, he chose a good and pure woman named Mary to be his mother. Mary lived in the little village of Nazareth and was engaged to be married to Joseph, a humble carpenter who lived nearby. One day, when Mary was alone, God sent his messenger, the angel Gabriel, to appear before her. Hail Mary, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Mary was at first frightened and confused by this greeting of the angel of God, but then Gabriel told her that God had chosen her to give birth to Jesus. Fear not, Mary, for you are special in God's eyes, and behold, he has chosen you to bring forth a son. You shall call him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of God, and his kingdom shall have no end. Ooh. Mary now understood everything she had been told, and it filled her with great joy and happiness. She replied to Gabriel, saying, I will happily carry out God's will. Not long after Mary had spoken to 
Not long after he had spoken to Mary, the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph one night as he slept. In Joseph's dream, the angel of the Lord told him of God's plan. Joseph, God has chosen you to be the father of son, Jesus, and Mary will be his mother. When Joseph awoke, he went to Mary with joy in his heart. Both Mary and Joseph had heard that God's son would be coming, and they were overjoyed to be chosen by God to be his parents. And so, Mary and Joseph went back to living their quiet lives, keeping God secret only between themselves. Now, at that time, they lived, they lived and was ruled by the Romans, who were mighty, but wicked rulers of an enormous empire. The chief ruler, a man named Caesar Augustus, was mean and greedy. He wanted to tax everyone in the land to raise money for himself and the Romans, so he issued a decree. Every man to that way, Caesar would know every person who lived in his country so he could be taxed. And so, Joseph and Mary left Nazareth to return to the small village of Bethlehem, about 90 miles away, where Joseph had been born. It was a difficult journey across a hot land, but after six long days and nights, they finally reached Bethlehem. By then, Mary was very tired and about to give birth. We have traveled a very long way, and my wife is very tired. Is there any room out here? It doesn't make it any quieter, does it? Oh, when they arrived, the city was already very crowded with other people who had come back to be registered, and all of the inns are full, but Joseph shot at shelter at anyone's anyway, and hoped that someone might spare room for Mary. And so it went at every end. But one innkeeper looked up and felt sorry for her. He said, <laughs> Wait, um, are we supposed to exit to back? We thank you very much for your kindness, sir. The stable was for animals, for the donkeys, cows, and sheep that people had brought with them. But Mary and Joseph were grateful for any shelter they could get that little night in the town of Bethlehem.
That night, Mary gave birth, Jesus was born. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the everlasting Prince of Peace, for he is called all these things, was born to a simple carpenter and his wife. And to make the baby Jesus comfortable, Mary wrapped him in swaddling, clean strips of white cloth, and laid down gently in the soft hay in the manger, the animal's feeding box. That same night, there were shepherds watching their flocks of sheep on the steep hill surrounding Bethlehem. The shepherds were poor men who wore rough, simple clothing for them. Nights were usually cold, dark, cold, and lonely. But, the, but, that, but the night that Jesus was born, the angel Gabriel suddenly appeared above them in the sky. The shepherds had never seen the angel, and they were, um, were frightened. But the angel of God soon covered them, saying, Fear not, good shepherds, for I have wonderful news. Today in the city of Bethlehem, a child is born. This child shall grow up to be our king, not just any king, but the king of all kings, the world's savior. Please tell us where we can find him. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then suddenly a whole host, a multitude of heavenly angels, appeared in the sky, and they heard or announced the news of the baby Jesus.
When the angels had departed, the shepherds decided that they should go see the baby Jesus right away. Let us go to Bethlehem. The shepherds were the first to see and worship the baby Jesus. They searched their pockets for some gift they could give him. What have I give to this king? I'm just a poor shepherd. If only we have riches to honor him by. Brothers and sisters, we can offer him our faith. Let us kneel before him and pray. Faith and trust in Jesus were all that mattered to God. And for the shepherds, just seeing Jesus filled them with hope for all people. Joy to the world, they cried. The Lord, our Savior, has come. The word about Jesus' birth began to spread, and little by little, little, the stable filled with men and women from near and far. Children came too, but they were shy at first, until Mary beckoned them to come forward. Meanwhile, in a land far to the east of Bethlehem, three wise men of great knowledge noticed an unusual bright star in the sky. Upon their camels, the three wise men, or Magi as they are now known, journeyed for several weeks, faithfully following the star shining brightly in the sky, until it stood over the little stable in Bethlehem where the holy infant lay.
When they saw the baby Jesus, the three wise men fell on their knees in humble worship. They lay at the feet of baby Jesus, the valuable treasures they had brought with which to honor him. The first king gave him gold. The second king gave him sweet smelling frankincense. And the third king gave him perfume like myrrh. For they knew they had at last found their savior, God's son, who had come to bring peace on earth on that silent and holy night. And that is the story of the first Christmas.
Now, you saw a video. How was that like the pageant you just did? What parts of it were the same? And maybe something was different. You can raise your hand and I'll try to hear you and then I'll, I'll say because I'm not gonna pass the microphone back and forth. So what was, what was some of the things that were the same that you just saw in the pictures? Anything? They're thinking. Yes, Sarah. There were shepherds and sheep. Yes, there were. Anything else did you see that was the same? Yes, well. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. If somebody could say what Will just said. Oh, oh, giving birth to Jesus. Jesus. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. I, should I should have thought have ahead to have, to have a microphone, microphone down, down there so that we could, we could interact with one another. But yes, there are lots of things, that, different pictures, obviously different pictures than what, what we've just seen. But some of the things were very much the same. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about the fact that tonight... We are celebrating and hearing what's been called the old, old story of Jesus and his love. It's a familiar story. I mean, you know, it's one we hear every year this time. Mary, Joseph, angels, shepherds, wise men, a manger for a bed, a donkey, camel traveling, a shining star. But I want us to really think about this story and why it's so important that we tell it every year. And we have a pageant every year, too. Some of you have been participating in this pageant since you could walk and talk. Miss Lauren would say that the middle schoolers have now advanced from being prophets, townspeople, shepherds, angels, and kings to being narrators. Yeah, the narrators, there they are. I see them in that front row. Excellent. Some would even say that the costumes you are still wearing are the ones you wore last year, or perhaps your older brother or sister wore it before you. With all that history, you really didn't need to memorize your lines, did you? I mean, you do it over and over again. Eh, some of you still had to have your papers, though. It's, it's, it helps. I, I still have my paper here, too. Many churches had their own versions of a Christmas pageant with slight variations. Sometimes they have a real baby or real animals. Some shepherds may wear bathrobes. And kings may have robes of velvet. Sometimes Mary and Joseph don't talk at all while an adult reads the story from the Bible. Some pageants are held outside. Now tonight that would be a little brisk with costumes worn over coats and finger warmers. Some are held inside the church and participants play all the parts. For several years, I got to play the part of the star at our former church in Edison. I wore a special star costume. A favorite story of mine about Christmas pageants is called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. It was written by Barbara Robinson. Some of you adults may remember that it was also made into a movie and a musical. Anyway, this pageant story opens with the longtime director of the pageant falling and breaking her leg. So the mother of the narrator, hereafter called mother, has to step up and direct the pageant, which should be easy since everyone in their small church knows who will play each part. They play these same parts every year. The narrator's friend will be Mary. The minister's son <clears throat> will be Joseph. The youngest children, little angels and shepherds. And the older children, part of the angel choir, 
with the oldest boys as the wise men. However, the usual plans for this church are completely upended by the arrival of the Herdman children, a family of six described as absolutely the worst kids in the history of the world. They lied and stole and smoked cigars, even the girls, and talked dirty and hit little kids and cursed their teachers and took the name of the Lord in vain. Children who were on their own since their mother worked two and three jobs. The Herdmans have rarely been part of that church but they arrived at the Sunday school on the day the pageant rehearsals were announced. The Herdmans proceeded to take over all the parts of the pageant. Mary, Joseph, the three kings, and the angel of the Lord. What is interesting is that for the Herdmans, the pageant story is brand new. And as mother begins to read from her Bible, they keep asking questions, trying to understand why Jesus was put in a feeding trough. And why didn't Joseph argue more for a real room? They wanted to beat up King Herod and couldn't understand why the cheap king handed out oil for a present. That wouldn't help a baby. The story goes on to tell of all the misunderstandings and one begins to wonder what will happen on the actual day of the pageant. That night, as the narrator describes, the herdman Mary and Joseph look just like the people you see on the evening news. Refugees sent to wait in some strange and ugly place. The narrator goes on to say that she realized that this was just the way it must have been for the real Holy Family, stuck away in a barn by people who didn't much care what happened to them. They couldn't have been very neat and tidy either, but more like this Mary and Joseph, with uncombed hair and smudged faces and clothes that were not on perfectly straight. The herdman Mary even held the baby doll Jesus slung up over her shoulder, and before she put it in the manger, she thumped it twice on the back as if it were a real baby. The herdman angel of the Lord shouted to the terrified shepherds, Hey, unto you a child is born, as if it was the best news in the world. And then the wise men marched up bringing a ham from their own food basket instead of the fancy bath salt jars usually used for the myrrh and frankincense. It seemed that the Herdmans had improved the pageant a lot just by doing what came naturally, like burping the baby and thinking a ham would make a better present than a lot of perfumed oil. The narrator goes on to say that she had originally explained to the Herdmans that the pageant was about Jesus, but that was just part of it. In watching the Herdmans come to understand and interpret the mystery of Jesus' birth from their own lives, the narrator saw this story of a new baby and his mother and father who were in a lot of trouble. No money, no place to go, no doctor, nobody they knew. And the wonder of shepherds and wise men arriving with practical gifts and an angel of the Lord shouting, listen up, this is good news. This is good news. And it must be told over and over again from different perspectives, all pointing to the miraculous fact that God in Jesus became a human being, a human baby who would grow up, live his life, and teach us how to truly love one another. He will show that love by dying on the cross to save us from our sinful selves and rising on Easter Day to victory that is the best news ever. The story told in this pageant and thousands of others is wonderful, miraculous, and the best good news ever. 
And now, at this time, we are grateful to invite Miss Zara up to sing for us, and we will um, accept our evening offerings. Um, and those of you who are watching online, remember you can still give um, through links online. Gentle Mary. Gentle Mary laid her child. <laughs> Oh, Mary laid her child. 
us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the abundance of gifts that you have given to us. We thank you for the gift of the children who have brought joy and song to our lives this evening. We thank you for the gift of music. We thank you most of all for the gift of yourself. And Lord, we thank you that this night you became one of us, that we might know and serve and love you better. And we pray for those who do not have what we have this night, those who are cold and hungry, those who have no place to lay their head, those who are at war, our troops, Lord. We ask your blessing upon them and all of the, the folks that are taking care of our lights and wires. We pray for friends across this country who are snowbound because of cold and snow. We ask that you would be with them. We lift up to you folks that we are concerned about, people that <clears throat> are grieving this night. Lord, thank you that you are with us all and that you teach us how to pray and be with one another. And we pray together the prayer you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And now, go ahead and sing the great good news in our carol number 29, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Thank you. 